So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these digital interactive worksheets. They're drag and drop. Students really enjoy them. This particular one was made by Lindsay Kent. It's available on her Teachers Pay Teachers site, Approaching Infinity. Uh, I got another example of a different drag and drop, kind of slightly different formatting. I also got this one from Teachers Pay Teachers site, Rise and Sign. Uh, these are really easy to grade because of the color coding and they're not hard to make once you understand the basics. So each of these basically has three components. The background and border of your slide and the stagnant parts of your slide, which are not going to be movable. So you can see here all the questions, background and border are not movable. And then the last component to make is the movable parts. We use two programs for this, PowerPoint and Google Slides. So we're gonna start by opening a blank PowerPoint, deleting any text boxes, and then going right click format background or design format background. Here I'm just showing you the different background formatting options that you could use to make your own drag and drop. We're gonna do a gradient fill to achieve that rainbow effect. Now again, I'm just showing you what some of the options are. But the one that's going to get us that cool rainbow are these gradient stops. We can click on each of these arrows and then change the color and move the slides to get a faded look. So right now I'm just filling in the different colors of the rainbow. And you're going to notice that I'm going to run out of gradient stops to click on before I've done my entire rainbow. And to add more, I'm just going to click on this little plus sign. And then complete filling in my rainbow colors. Now, the color window pulls up basic colors, but it doesn't have um, a lot of variety. And so if these colors are too harsh for you and you wanna customize, you just click on the one you wanna customize, click on color and select more colors. Now you can get a softer pink tone and sure enough that upper right hand corner is a little bit softer looking now. So we have our background done. Now we need to move on to our border. PowerPoint doesn't actually have a border feature, so we have to fake it by inserting a rectangular box and make it the full size of the slide. And then we're gonna format this shape so that it has no fill, but the line, also known as the border, will have a solid fill of black and will make it thicker by increasing the width to six. And I'm just doing six enter, and you can also increase or decrease the width with these little arrows. And now I have my background with my border. Uh, really quick, it should be noted that the different shape formatting features that you see on the right hand side are also available in the menu up along the top. They are the exact same features. It's just a matter of preference which one you use. So now that I have my first slide done, I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to start building out the other stagnant features, like the title page, anything that's a non-movable object. So on the title page, we are going to start by inserting a text box for the title and for the directions. So right here, I'm first starting off with one for the directions. I want to make this a solid fill of white with a black outline background. So I'm editing that under Format Shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and just type in my directions and then I'm going to be formatting my directions to use a fun font, a larger font size, and to center the font. You can do all of that by clicking on the Home tab at the top. You're going to notice I have a bunch of fonts that you probably don't have installed on your computer. Really, you can use any font. Um, you don't have to download extra special fonts. Um, just pick something that you think makes it look nice. Now that we have our directions finished, I can move on to doing the title. So we're going to repeat the process we just did by inserting a text box. This time though, I don't want the text box to have a fill or a border. So I'm going to leave it no fill, no border. I'm going to add my text and I'm going to format it so that it looks nicer. And we're just going to select, go to home, and change the font and the font size. And center it. 
Now, the original um, example I showed you actually had this font outlined in white. And so you might think, okay, if I highlight it and I go to shape format and I click uh, solid line and I make it white, it's going to make the font have an outline of white. What you have to notice is under the shape format pane, shape object is selected instead of text options. So you have to be under text options to add a white border to the text. Otherwise, it's going to add a white border to the text box. Uh, I make this mistake all the time. So I'm going back to my shape options and I'm changing that to have no outline on the text box. And now you can see my font has a nice white outline. Um, on the original uh, example that I showed you, with this uh, title had like a faded look behind it. So to achieve that faded look behind the title, we're going to insert a shape, a rectangle, and we're going to fill that rectangle with white. And we're going to then um, make it so that it has no border. So right here I'm doing a solid fill of white. Make sure you're on shape object. And I'm doing no outline. Now the problem is I can't see my text. So we're going to click on this object again. And the way you get the faded look is by changing the transparency. Now I'm going to click on this and move it so that you can see that unfortunately this faded look is sitting on top of my text and that's not what I want. I want it to be behind the text. So we're going to have to reorder these objects. So I have to go to the selection pane, which you can get to by clicking on selection pane or from the home screen by selecting Arrange and Selection Pane, which just unselected it, so I have to reselect. So here's what the Selection Pane looks like. As I click on each object, you can see it's highlighted, so you know which object you're moving. I'm gonna grab and drop my, rec my white rectangle to be behind the um, title. Now we're on to our next slide. All right, so we're gonna build out all the stagnant options on our second slide. That's going to include a rectangular box for our answer choices. We're going to give this a black outline and a white fill. We're then also going to make the fill slightly transparent so that you can see the background um, rainbow color kind of shining through. And then we need to add the actual question boxes, which are going to have a couple components. So the first is just a rectangular shape with a white fill and a black outline. Once we have that set up, we're going to add a text box to create the little drop zone area where students will drag and drop their answers. So we're going to go insert text box. We're going to drag and draw our text box and type in our text. And then we're going to format our text to be a different size, a different font, and also we're going to position it so that it's going vertically. So to get it to go vertical, we use this option here. And then I'm going to resize the box. Um, notice I, I need to not only fill this with a gray color, but I'm also going to have to center it. So I went ahead and filled with gray, but now you'll notice the black outline does not look um, consistent with the rest of the box. So I'm clicking on the former box to check my width on my outline, and I'm going to copy that same width onto this new text box so that everything lines up, and it does. Now we're going to center the font so it's not all squished at the bottom. I'm also going to change the font to be white so that it, it doesn't jump out as bright, it's more subtle. And the last part to this is I now need to add in the um, question number, which was inside of a circle. So we're going to drag and drop a circle shape again with a black outline and white fill. Now. I need a text number inside of this circle, so we're also going to add a text box. We're going to add a number, and we're going to format that number so that it's a different font, different size. Now the text box starts with no fill, no outline, which is how we want to keep it because we want our outline to be the circle. So get it repositioned to where you want it. Now I need to repeat this. I need to copy all these objects. 
so that I have six of these per slide. The problem is I don't want to have to copy and paste each of them separately. So instead, we're going to do what's called grouping. So you're going to go to the selection pane again, and you're going to find all your objects that make the question box, and you're going to select all of them by holding down either Command or Control and clicking on each. Then you're going to right click on top of the objects and select group. Now they've all been grouped into one object. You can either Command C or Control C and then Command V and that will copy and paste the object. You can also resize the object if you want. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and make four more copies and line them up how I want them. Once I get six of these on the page, all I need to do is edit the question numbers and I will have my question slide done. So at this point, I need to duplicate this because I'm supposed to have 18 questions. So I'm going to right click and select duplicate twice. And I'm also going to edit these question numbers as well so that I have all 18 questions as my static background. One thing that you should uh, possibly do once you get this finished, before we add the actual questions themselves, you might want to save this as a template so that you can reuse it again for a totally different topic. So now we're going to make our actual questions. To do this, we're going to insert a new slide. And we only need one text box for this. We're going to insert an equation. And the equation we're going to insert is sine of 2 pi over 3. We're just going to start typing here sine. And we're going to use the fraction option to insert our fraction. And for pi, we're going to use this symbol menu up at the top, find pi and select it, and put it over 3. Now, the thing with this equation editor is it will always default to a font of Cambria Math. So if you want to change the font to be something other than Cambria Math, like a cute font, you're going to have to select it, go to the equation, and select normal text. You can then go back to the home menu and pick a fun font if you want. Once you get the font that you want, we are going to save this as a picture on our desktop. So we're going to click on it and we're going to right click and we're going to say save as picture. And I'm going to save this picture to my desktop as a PNG file. I'm going to go ahead and resize my screen so you can see that it sure did save. And I'm going to now drag and drop it into the presentation. Now all I have to do is resize it and place it where I want. We're going to repeat that process for all 18 questions and you're going to see the result here in just one moment. So you can see I've gone ahead and filled all those in. We are now going to delete that extra slide and we're going to export this so that we can put it into Google Sheets. So we're going to click export. You're going to export it to your desktop. Make sure it's a PNG file. It needs to have a width of 2000 or it won't come out clearly and you want to save every slide. Click export and you will see it appear on your desktop in a folder. We are now going to open up a new Google Slides. And what we're going to do is we're going to import the presentation as the background to our slide. So you go ahead and start by retitling this whatever you want. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to delete these text boxes. By adding our presentation in as the background, it's going to make it so that it's flat and stagnant and can't be moved around. So you can either click background or right click, change background, and you're going to choose an image from the presentation folder we just exported to your desktop. We are going to select slide one and we are going to insert that. We're now going to add an additional blank slide and we're going to repeat the process this time adding slide two, and then we're going to repeat with slide three and four 
until all four of our slides are in Google Sheets. Because it's the background that we're changing, you're not going to be able to move any of the objects that we built in PowerPoint. So once you get that completed, we are now on to part two, which is creating our little movable pieces, which we have to do again in PowerPoint. So we're going to go ahead and minimize sheets. And now we're at PowerPoint. We're going to add back in a slide again. And we only need one text box. We're going to type um, each of the answers in, and then we're going to format the font and the size as well as the background. So one of my answer choices was going to be one, changing the font and size. And I'm also going to go ahead and fill in my background. Now for the outline, we're going to do something fun with this. Um, let's go ahead and make the font white just to make it a little more interesting. And for the outline, let's go ahead and we're going to make the outline black, but I'm going to show you one extra feature with outlines that I haven't shown you yet. So I've made my outline black. This little sketch is kind of fun because you can get like wavy lines that look a little bit more artistic. Um, and then, you know, you can change the thickness as always. You can see the waviness a little bit better. So once you have your object done, we're going to do the same thing we did before. And we are going to save this picture to our desktop. Once it's on our desktop, we'll be able to drag and drop it onto the Google slide. And by doing that, because it's not part of the background, it will remain a movable object, which is what we're trying to get with our drag and drop. So go ahead and open Google Sheets up again, drag and drop it onto your Google Sheet. You'll have to resize it and move it. And the other thing is, if you remember from the demonstration, there was actually multiples of these on top of each other. So um, if there's going to be more than one that has the answer of one, you're going to need to command C and then command V to make it so that you have two or three of these. And then you can just stack them all on top of each other. Um, and then that way, when you drag and drop, there's still another one left underneath it so that you can use them multiple times. Um, we can go ahead and just edit this again to get the next possible answer choice and continue until all of your answer choices are in your Google Slides as movable objects. So here I'm showing an option for a root 2 as a possible solution. Sometimes this requires that you resize the text box in order to be able to see it really well. which you'll see as soon as I change the font. And now that I have it three size, so it's a little bit easier to see, I'm going to change the fill and save this and drag and drop it into my Google Sheets. And we see it right here and I'm going to drag and drop it in. Same thing, resize it, move it, make multiple copies of it, stack them on top of each other. Now, once you've completed this and you've got the whole drag and drop answer pane filled with your answer choices, you're going to need to copy and paste them onto slide three and four. Now, you don't have to do this one at a time. You can actually drag and select both options. Do command C and then command V on slide three and on slide four and all the duplicates of each answer choice will copy over with it. So you basically now have the entire presentation done. Um, there's two things you need to know about um, giving this to your students as an activity. If you're gonna give them a link to this activity, then what you wanna do with the link is to edit this end part that says edit and sharing, and you wanna type in copy. That will create a new copy for each student so they're not all trying to edit the same document. If instead you're just going to use the Google Drive feature inside of Schoology to share, you want to just make sure that the setting on this is changed to share with anyone who has the link. And then students will be able to get their own copy inside of Schoology when you assign it to them.